for you.
rise in your power. And Lord, we ask you will rise in your strength. Lord, we ask that you will rise in your glory. Lord, we ask that you will rise in your awesomeness. And Lord, you are worthy. And Lord, you are wonderful. Lord, you are kind. Lord, you will open your mouth and say beautiful things to Jesus this morning. For we will praise you from the rising of the sun. Turn us going down. Only your name, only your name, only the name of the place. And Lord, I worship you this morning. I give you praise. I give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank Jesus. Precious name of worship. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you have a testimony to share, a pastor is waiting for you at the joy entrance. If you have a testimony to share, a pastor is waiting for you at the joy entrance. Hallelujah. Welcome your neighbor to the light. Pastor Ochu. Pastor Ochu is waiting for you at the joy entrance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. On this land, we've come to give you praise. In this house, we've come to worship your name. We can do what you need and to do. We can fix what you no man can fix. On this land, we've come to give you praise. In this church, we've come to worship your name. Oh, can do what you no man can do. Fix what a no man can fix. Everybody can deceive. Everybody can scream. Everybody can dance. Everybody can deceive. Everybody can scream. Everybody can dance. Everybody can dance. Everybody can dance. I'm not going to 
this morning. We give you praise because you are God. We give you praise. Is that your testimony this morning? Is 
touch your testimony this morning. There was something that makes me able to praise It's your time, it's your love, it's your pain, it's your compassion that makes me better. our voice and begin to thank God once again. Open your mouth and appreciate God. Thank Him for all He has been doing. He's worthy of our thanks. He's a good God. He's our Heavenly Father who understands our heartbeats, who knows what we go through. He's our God that is always by our side. He's a God. All flesh gather to worship Him. He said, my glory will I not share with anyone. He's a sovereign God. Whatever he says, is final. No one questions him. Father, we thank you. Father, we appreciate you. We give you all glory. We return all praise unto your holy name. Be thou insulted. Be thou glorified. We thank you as a ministry. We thank you as one family. We thank you because you have given us such a privilege to belong to your family, our Heavenly Father. Thank you and thank you and thank you. Thank you for the diverse healings. Thank you for encounters with you. Thank you for your divine visitations. Thank you for touching our lives, giving us a new name. We praise your name. In Jesus' precious name, we give them thanks. I want you to welcome to your neighbor to your left and right. Welcome to Zion. Welcome to the presence of the Lord. Welcome to where God manifests himself mightily. Welcome to where God meets our problems. Where he converts our problems to miracles. Hallelujah. Let's have our seat majestically in God's presence. As we receive the following testifiers, as a comfort, we put our hands together for Jesus, who is the doer of all. Hallelujah to Jesus. We have bigness, Gloria Onyewi. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. We have Pastor Ngozi Wobo. Put your hands together for Jesus as they come. Hallelujah. We have Sister Yinka Shoyinke Sholanke. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. We have Sister Taiwo Akinyele. Akinyele, let's put our hands together for Jesus. We have Mrs. Olorudere. Hallelujah. <laughs> wow. What's his name? I can't. Please, I cannot see this name very well. <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. Tell us what the Lord has done for you in two minutes. Praise the Lord. I just want to bless God for divine healing. It all started um, two months back. Um, I had a sudden growth on my laps close to my knee. I was just, I didn't take it for, I didn't take it serious because it was not painful and it was just very tiny. 
so I just overlooked it. And all of a sudden, it became very big and it's grown to a ball. I took some medication and it busted and I was treating it. But I realized that when the pus is, when the pus is coming out, it's always very, very painful. And in the, at, in the midst of that pain, I was still ministering. I was still leaving, I was still backing up. And immediately I come down from the altar, the pus would be dripping out of my leg. All staying there, cleaning it up. And I was not giving up. I just want to thank God for Pastor and Pastor Mrs. for their prayers. I was so strong in faith that God will heal me. I actually went for a test to do a sugar level test and a diabetic test because the boil was taking so long. I did the test and they were all negative and I now realize that this has to be prayers. And in the midst of those pain, I was still serving the Lord. Irrespective of the pains, I was still serving the Lord. And at a point, it will, it will dry up. It will grow fresh, it will dry up, it will grow fresh and it will dry up. This time around, it dried up completely. I just want to thank God because he's the doer of all those things. At the camp, I could not kneel down for a very long time. For two months now, I was always wearing flats. At the camp on Wednesday, I said, let me kneel down this time around. Let me see if God has completely healed me. And to God be the glory, I knelt down. In the course of my ministration at the camp, I jumped up. I sang a song that I was needed to jump. I jumped up. I knelt down. I knew that God has perfectly healed me. I wore my heels today, and I knew that God has completely healed me. I just want to thank God for the healing. Hallelujah. What a divine healing. Okay. Pastor Ngozi, what the Lord has done for you in two minutes. Praise the Lord. I want to testify to the goodness of God. It all has to do with my mom. God healed her. We all saw her when she was here and she was well and I took her home. And I came back because of the camp. On Friday morning, just as we were going for the morning devotion, I got a call from my brother. Early in the morning, and that was very strange to me. I picked it up and they said ah, that my mom's blood pressure suddenly rose so high. It was 180. She has never had that in her entire life. And that it started the day before and it just wouldn't go down up till that Friday morning. And for some reason, they couldn't place her on um, medication. I said, well, I'm at the camp. That's all I can do from here. And she was insisting on going somewhere. And they were begging her not to go. So the reason they actually called me was to persuade her not to go because the nurse said she shouldn't even go beyond her room. So I brought it up before God. I said, God, I'm in camp. I am here to seek your face. I cannot be thinking about my mom and her health and her blood pressure. Just take care of her the way you, only you can. And in the afternoon session, uh, God led her, that in the Lord, to mention about a heart condition. And I came, immediately I came, said, are you standing in for somebody? I said, yes, for my mom. And he prayed. By the time we are now leaving, you know, we usually leave around 8 p 7, 8 p.m. When we come for the afternoon session, we go, uh, we go back around 7 p.m. So as we were just going, her nurse called me. That her blood pressure has come down. I said, what is it? 130. I said, okay, it should just remain that way. Last night again, I called them. How is it? 130. And I said, praise the Lord. She didn't have to go on any medication for that. It just went the way it came. And it will remain like that in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank God for divine healing. Sister Shuloke. Good morning, church. My children and my husband for what he has done and what he's doing presently and what he's going to do. It's all started at, um, I mean, about three, going to four years now. It's all about Mori Oluwa. 
during pregnancy, um, I have a lot of challenges. Even when I want to give birth to her, it was tough that I gave birth to her through cesarean section. After 41 days, somebody came to pay us a visit. So she carried her. She said, ah, mommy, Ewa, this girl is not breathing well. I told her, she's enjoying her sleep. She's not, she's not like, like, like an adult. When she's not, you could hear from outside. So I, I told the person that she's enjoying her sleep, that they should just leave her. She said, no, that she's not breathing well. I said, okay, I'll take her to the hospital. So I took her to Randrew. So the doctor we met there said, I should go to, to the lab and do, a, not even small test, an x-ray that they should check her throat. So I took her to the lab. So they, we brought back the results. After I gave the results to the doctor, the doctor now said, Madam, that this thing, she didn't even tell me the name of the thing behind the throat. She just told me that the passage between the nostrils and um, between the nostrils to the throat was so small. So she's trying to breathe in the air. And I said, okay, now what are we going to do now? So we were referred to Lutz ENT department that they specialize on um, air, throat, and nose that should go there. So we went there that day. The doctor we met the first time, the third one, I mean, the second one, the third one. The third one, not, uh, the second doctor now told me that, ah, Madam, do you know what is, uh, what is this thing called? I said, no, I don't know. He said, it's called adenoid tonsils. And I said, okay, what am I going to do about it? He said, well, we'll be taking, she will be taking a medication. And every time we go for um, an appointment like that, we buy drugs worth 15 to more or more than that. So we go to loot every time on appointment. Um, three, three appointments before she was discharged. So the doctor now told me that, ah, madam, that this, this thing has, um, um, has, increased, has been increased from stage one to stage two, that she has checked her far. Uh, and he has, uh, she has seen that um, the thing has gone down before, but now it's going from stage one, it's been um, from stage one to stage two, now it's going to stage three. If the thing should get to stage three, that they will need to perform surgery or not. Ah, I said, inside me, I don't want to um, argue with, uh, with the doctor. I just said, God, <laughs> this girl came out through Sicilian section. I've been through a lot. And I don't want any doctor or net to perform any surgery on her. I said from the Almighty God. So before I left ENT department that day, I prayed that by the time we are coming back here for the next appointment, that she will be decided. The doctor will not see anything again. So on Tuesday, it was on Monday we went for the appointment. On Tuesday, when we came for um, communion service. So uh, that day, um, Pastor did not preach. He was just praying about healing. So after we took the uh, communion, and I called her, I told her, say after me. I prayed with her. So after then, we came to the altar here, after the service. So I just said, Muriri, follow me to the altar. So I told her, say after me, I am healed. Every spirit called adenoid tonsils in my throat, I told you, um, I pray that it should disappear. So he said it after me. We left that day. When I got home, I said, God, by the time we are going back to Lutz, the doctor will just told us that the thing is no more there. So on Wednesday morning, um, as against Thursday, I had a dream. So in my dream, I saw a white man putting on a, uh, putting on a doctor's uh, coat. So I just told doctor that, ah, doctor, see, this is what doctor told me, that there's, uh, there's this thing called adenoid tonsils that is at the back of our throat, that the doctor said the thing has moved from stage one to stage two, going to stage three, that if the thing should move to stage three, they will need to perform surgery on that. And I, I'm scared. I don't want anybody to perform surgery. The doctor, in my dream, the doctor just 
took um, this nail file, just said, child, oh yeah, open your mouth. She opened her mouth. She just used that to, to scrape and say, this is it now. She's fine now. I said, okay, check my own too. I hope I'm fine. So the doctor now said, ah, you are fine. There's nothing there. I said, okay, no problem. So the third appointment, before she was discharged, the doctor now told me that, um, madam, I can't see anything, but let me still wait. I will still give you another appointment. So I took her to the next, uh, second one before she was discharged. So the doctor checked. He said, no, I'll still give you another one. So they gave us another appointment three months after. And I told my husband that, ah, I didn't tell them in my office that I would take my child for, um, to, to the uh, clinic for an appointment. I just begged to my husband, please, let me to take Mori. He said, no problem, that he's going to take her. So he took her that day. He just called me. You know, I've been, moni I've been using phone to monitor, monitoring him. So he couldn't pick up. Later, I now called, I now called him, that, ah, but I've been calling you, what happened now? What was happening? What did the doctor say? He just said, she has been discharged. He was there that day, maybe he will be able to. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord for the divine healing. God be the glory when we get to the hospital that day. The doctor checked and checked. He said, why is she being detained all this while that she's supposed to have been discharged long ago? So, the man just bring out a sheet of paper, wrote a note on it that she's been discharged, and that was all. And also, during the camp meeting, the devil tried a lot concerning my child. Because when it got to the tail end, as I, from the Friday night, I started throwing up. I had nothing left in me, no strength, nothing left. To God be the glory, I was able to scale through. I fasted all through. To God be the glory. Praise God. Hallelujah to Jesus. What a divine healing. the Lord. Please don't mind my voice. So. I just want to thank God because this year camp was actually meant for me. I don't know about you. Um, going to camp, while preparing for the camp, I told God, I said, God, this is exactly what I want from you. I just want to see you. I want to ask you some questions about my life. And on Thursday, I was I was actually, in the, let me just say, I was in spirit because when Gio was leading um, worship, I was asked to kneel down. I was asked to kneel down, and I kneeled down. I was asked to lie down flat on the floor. I did. And everything, I was just hearing some voice in my ear, just lie down there. I lied that I don't know how many minutes I spent there, but I just know that God visited me that day. And it was all he was saying is this, all is well with you, my daughter. All is well with you. And even on Saturday, when Dio was, you know, anointing our head, and I was going, I said, Lord, just one word. Just one word. And God told me, he said, you can't be confused. Just be focused on God. I'm always here with you. I just want to give God the glory for that. Hallelujah. Thank God for divine visitation. Praise the Lord, brethren. I have two testimony. One is about my son. On Thursday, while in camp, he started developing temperature. And his own temperature is this temperature that is always hospitalized. And I told God that, God, I left everything for, to come to this camp. Even while the cow was faulty, even while I had to close my shop for like three days, I left everything for you that by yourself perform your healing on this boy. And I checked his temperature. His temperature was like 40, 40 plus. So I started like sponging him with water and all that. And I we still went to the camp. I didn't sleep a wink. The temperature subsided. And he never came up again. I know that his healing is permanent in Jesus' name. Amen. My second testimony is this. I had to close my shop on Wednesday afternoon. And even my neighbors were like, ah, 
Are you going to close the shop? He said, I'm traveling. I didn't say anything. So when um, I got to camp, I was giving calls. Ah, madam, we have been in your, sh- your shop. You're not there. Why did you close your shop? He said, I'm out of Lagos. I'll see you on Monday. Then yesterday um, afternoon, during the impartation service, daddy was praying and um, the call came in again. I was like, madam, I've been to your shop on Thursday, on Friday, and you've not opened. What is it? I need, I'm traveling on Monday. I need to buy some goods. And I was like, okay, please be patient. I'll be around in the evening. And the next time I get to the house, I'll call you. So when I got up to almost my estate, she called again. I'm in front of the shop waiting. I just left everything. Even when I had to cook, I left them and I went to the shop. And she started picking things and picking things. I was even thinking, and she has been to my shop like three times. She started picking things, and I was wondering, that, ah, is this woman really going to buy all these things? And she packed everything, and I was even looking for POS. I had to go and get POS from my neighbor and all that. And she bought things that, even from Monday to that Wednesday, I have not sold such items. I just want to bless God. I want to bless God for the, the God of wonders and miracles. In fact, he started with us, and I know that he's going to do amazing things in our life in this church in Jesus' name. Amen. What a divine visitation. Hallelujah to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Um, I was not going to share this testimony because I didn't see it as a big deal. But after the service, when I went, when I went to meet Pastor, and I thought about when he said I should come and see him, and I thought about it, I realized that it's actually a big deal. On signing my contract for my present employment, you're not supposed to take leave until after one year or ask for anything like that. But I'm running my master's, and last week was our exams, and last week was also, let me say, the time I'm supposed to reap the yam I've been planting for the past six weeks. And I was supposed to travel to go and see for that project. And I'm the only one that's been handling this big project, and there's no other person that I could have handed it over to. And my boss was not around, and I sent an email to him, and I said, sir, please, I need one week off for my exams. And he said, but you're supposed to travel to Port Harcourt this week. Who else will handle this project? And I was like, sir, um, I don't know, but my exams, I can't go fair. And I was like, let him come back, and we'll talk about it. He came back on Monday. My exam was supposed to start. He came back on Friday. My exam was supposed to start last week, Monday. And I sat to him, and I said, sir, what are we saying about my exam? He said, you're not going to write that exam. You have to be fair with it. I said, sir, I've paid school fees. So how, how will I do it then? And he said, Adezi, you are the only one that is handling three projects, four tons of shipments. Who would handle it? Do you want us to lose the money? And I went home and I said to myself, God, I don't know how you're going to do it, but you just have to do it. When I came to church on Sunday, that was the only thing I was praying for. I said, I can't come back next year to write any exam. And when I went to meet him on Monday, he said, okay, so what do you want me to do? And I told him, I'll come to work in the morning, then I'll go in the evening to write my exam. He now said, you're too stubborn. Anything you want, just do it. Make sure the project is handled. And I spoke to my colleague in Portacot, and I said, I will scan all the documents for this project to you. I will do everything, and I'll make sure that I follow up from Lagos. And throughout this week, declaring agent who is maybe he should be old enough to be my father, was answering all my calls, was listening to me, okay, do this, do that, clerk like this, do this, who is this, who is that, and I just want to thank God because normally this kind of situation is either young, maybe they will say they'll reduce your salary or something, something, and I've not even been confirmed, so they could actually say go if your exam is more important to you than this project, you can go, go and do it and not come back. I just thank God because for the favor, I just want to thank God. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah to Jesus. Let's lift up our hands and begin to give God thanks for these testimonies. What a wonder. What a wonderful thing that God has done for them. What a healing. Divine healing. Divine visitation. Oh, Father, we thank you. You are a doer of all this. Return. Receive all the glory. Receive all praise. We thank you. We acknowledge your presence that is thick in our midst. Father, we thank you. We praise the name of Lord. Even as many that are still believing you for such miracles, such visitation, such divine healings, Lord, duplicate, multiply, increase in our midst. Praise, let your name be glorified in our life individually. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Hallelujah to Jesus. Let's put our hands together for Jesus once again. 
as we receive the testimony house choir for the administration. Hallelujah. Come on, you can do better than that. Hallelujah. Turn those hands together unto God. It has been amazing and, and, and so many testimonies and God has been faithful. Hallelujah. It is because he's there. That's why we can testify. Hallelujah. Everything we've experienced is because Christ is. It's because of his presence and because of the victory that he has given to us. Hallelujah. See, we didn't earn anything we have. But his mercy is spoken on our behalf. There's a prayer we made on, on, on the camp, and, and we said, where yeah, your faith can you, cannot get you, let mercy go for you. I don't know if you understand. Where yeah, your faith can you, cannot get you, let mercy go for you. That is our heart's cry, and it's going to bring us victory, hallelujah. So today we want to thank God for the victory that he already has given to us. We don't fight because we want to win. We fight from victory, hallelujah. Do I be with us in this house? Just say, thank you, Jesus, for your victory. Say, thank you, Jesus, for your victory. Hallelujah. Who will stand against our God? No one can, and no one will. Who can stand against our King? No one can, and no one will. Oh. to Jesus victory belongs to him Thank you. 
so you put out trust in you and we put out hope in Jesus oh I see you the seems hopeless and you've prayed and you've fasted but you think there's no answer but you're going to worship God for that answer so you to come there's a worship and there's a praise that comes before the testimony it is greater than the one that comes after so today you're going to wave your hands and affirm that there's solutions to that problem that thing you're going through that God has already done it Victory belongs to you. Victory belongs to you. All the victory belongs. Victory belongs. Oh, with your hands to Jesus. Victory belongs. Victory belongs. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Victory belongs. Victory belongs. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Victory belongs. Victory belongs. Yeah, to you. to Jesus. Can you just help me hold the hands of somebody standing very close to you? I just want you to pray in the, with that person. Pray in the spirit for two minutes. 
Just pray in the spirit for two minutes with that person. Pray in the spirit for two minutes. Pray in the spirit for two minutes. Continue to pray. I said, Shall I
Just pray in the spirit. Just pray in the spirit. I feel the fire is building up. I feel the fire is building up. Just worship him.
Thank you for the privilege. Before you, we are all gathered once again to receive a touch. Bless this house. Anoint everyone. Reveal yourself to us. Make manifest your presence. Pour your oil afresh upon us. In the name of Jesus. And so shall it be. Welcome five people around you to church this morning. every one of you to God's presence. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27. He said, we come to pass in that day that his body shall be lifted from off your shoulder and his yoke from off your neck and that yoke shall be destroyed because of what? Not because of the pastor. Not because of the location. What destroys yoke is the anointing. Not because of how long you've been coming to church. The Bible says because of the anointing. And that makes anointing an essential tool in the work of ministry, in our work with God. Anointing can be defined as the presence of God upon a man. When it is there, you are sure yokes will be broken. Reason for struggle is the absence of the anointing. In the presence of the anointing, you thrive. The anointing comes through us as believers in forms of river, the presence of the Holy Spirit in us. The Bible says in John chapter 7, verse number 37 down to verse number 39. The Bible says in the last day, in that great day of defeat, Jesus stood and shouted with a loud voice. And they cried, if anybody thirsts, let him come to me. For anyone who believes in me, he said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. The Bible says he was talking, I was referring to the Holy Spirit, which everyone that believes on him shall receive. Hallelujah. There is an anointing that will come upon your life 
and will make you live as if the devil does not exist. You will live in difficult situations, in difficult locations, and you will succeed. Not because of certificate, not because you just, probably your intelligence. No. There is an anointing that comes upon you. And it's unfortunate, this generation of believers we have, they are not the kind of people who seek for the anointing. Because anointing is not what you tip pick up on your back, back on your back, your back, back here. No. There is a price for the anointing. There is a price for the anointing. The devil knows the importance of the anointing upon your life. That is why he will engage you with activities to ensure you continue to labor. You continue to labor. You see, one day of encounter with genuine anointing will terminate a lifetime of labor. Reason for struggle is the absence of his hand upon your life. You may probably feel that withdrawing to the closet to seek his face is wasting time. In the natural, I might look as if you are wasting time. But if I withdraw to the closet, take for example, for one week or for one month, by the time I am coming out, I will catch up with somebody who has, going, who has gone ahead eight years without God. Why the anointing came upon Elijah, sir, when the anointing came upon Elijah, right from the mountain, he came down and told her, you better get upon your chariots because I hear the sound of abundance of rain. He said, can I give you a ride? I don't need your ride. When the hand comes upon me, I will overtake you. And the Bible confirmed, before Ahab got to the gate of Jezreel, by reason of the anointing, Elijah outran him. First King 18, verse 44 to 46. Is it tells by moonlight story? No, it's real. What God is telling us there is that when the anointing comes upon you as a child of God, it gives you speed. Don't envy those who have gone ahead of you. Don't be angry with somebody who is succeeding better than you know. All I want you to be angry, be angry with yourself that you are far from God. God is not partial. He gives unto everyone according to their investment in him. For the Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, those who sow to the flesh will out of the flesh reach corruption, and those who sow to the spirit will out of the spirit reach eternal life. Are you following? Even in the natural, we human beings, we have a way of rewarding those who have really sacrificed for us. How much more God? How much more God? How much more God? The Bible says compassion does not fail. In Psalm 103 verse 9, it says he will not always treat us according to our sin. He will not always be angry with us. He will not always be charged with us because of our sin. No. No. Have you not read verse, verse 10, verse 10, verse 11, verse 12 of verse 103? He said, as the east is far from the west, so as he removed our iniquity far from us. No. No. It's not because you come before him as a merciful God. He will forgive you, but he will not do your responsibility for you. You can be talented, you can have beautiful dreams. If you don't locate yourself in the place of prayer and fasting, that dream will not have power to speak. There is a fire that must come upon the grace of God upon your life so that you can become a voice in your generation. There is no future for a lazy person spiritually before God. I don't care what people call you, what God calls you is my concern. Am I making sense to somebody? I do not care what people call you, what name they give you among your friends in your community. But what God calls you is my concern. If everybody knows you and God does not know you, you are finished. Jesus Christ said, I know my sheep and my sheep, they hear my voice. John 10, 27. I know my sheep and they hear my voice. If as a child of God, you've gone far with God three years, you have not been able to establish a, a direct hearing ability from your spiritual father, so-called God, your making level is in danger. And this is what the anointing does. You, can, you have to be schooled. He has to train you by force, by fire. You can't pick God on the move. You have to retire to his presence. You must begin to recognize the secret place where you need to speak with your maker. 
Are you hearing me? You begin to recognize one-on-one -on -one fellowship, communion with this God, koinonia with him. Your mother, your father may know you. If God does not know you, you, st you are still finished. There is a little to which anybody can lift you and carry you. And I keep telling you, no matter how long your parents' feather or your father's feather is, you must grow your own wings to fly. Are you listening to me? You must grow your own wings to fly. Nobody can breathe for you. Nobody can go to the toilet for you. There are non-transferable responsibilities in this race we are being called to. Are you listening to me? I am calling you to pay the ultimate price. And how do I get the anointing operational in my life? I've taught you in the first service, the combined service we had in the morning, what the anointing does when it comes upon a person. It's a yoke breaker. It's a speed giver. It protects you from what destroys others. You survive when others are going down. There are some attacks that will be launched at you that looking at it naturally, you can't survive, but you will survive it all the way. Because we are in a battlefield. In a battlefield, arrows fly. Oh, Psalm 91, verse number 1, beginning. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of my God, is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I what? trust. Surely will deliver me from the snare of the fowler. So there is a snare of fowler. His truth shall be my shield and my bucket. He will cover me with his feathers and under his wings will I trust. His truth shall be my shield and my bucket. He said, you will not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that fly by day, nor the person that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wasted at noonday. Which that tells you, that confirms to you in the midst of wicked enemy, you have been planted. Invisible forces of darkness that are after you. What will keep you yourself and make you survive? This onslaught that is already unleashed on the world is the anointing, sir. Psalm 105, verse 13. And they go from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people. He says that no man to do them wrong. He reproves kings for their sake. Say, but not my anointed. I told you that wasn't a suggestion, it's a command. His eyes are always upon the future of the land. His eyes are always upon his own people. You cannot be anointed and miss out of God's radar. Is somebody hearing me? He gave you approval to take off your flight. He gave you approval from the control tower. You cannot miss out of that radar. He will monitor you to the end. But when you refuse to flow by this dictate, whatever happens to you is on your, your, your own. That is why divine direction, mystery of divine direction is key in the life of a child of God. Is somebody hearing me? It doesn't matter how many people are involved. Don't ever go to where God didn't ask you to go. It doesn't matter who is calling you. Because by the time the wala happened, none of them can save you. The Bible says no man can deliver your soul in the day of death. Only righteousness delivers in the day of death. Are you listening to me? I'm calling you into a into partnership with true oil from heaven. When it comes upon you, the difference will be clear. You won't be the one that will tell people, don't you say I'm anointed? No, the result in your life will tell us. Am I making sense to somebody? The result in your life will tell us. When the fruit on a tree is not good, change the seed. Is somebody hearing me? It's too late at that time. The fruit is not good. The fruit is not good. Treating the leaves and treating the leaves is exercising in fertility. And that is what many of us are doing right now. You are treating leaves and fruits. Get to the roots. Get to the roots. Get to the roots. And only God can repair a foundation of a, a faulty foundation of a building. Only God. Not even the engineer can fix it. They can only pull it down and rebuild it. Am I making sense to somebody? Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. In Psalm 11 verse 3, he said, If the foundation be destroyed, what can a righteous man do? The anointing of the Holy Spirit. God is calling you to the closet. God is calling you. There is an unction coming upon your life in this service this morning. And that unction is to distinguish you. It's to cause you to stand out. You will no longer come down with any form of sickness or disease or any form of curses, arrows that are flying by the day that pick on any other person and bring them down. Nothing like that will bring you down. I shared it. I told you of the testimony that happened in the camp. You had the testimony in the first service. How many of you were in the first service today? All right, many of you were not there. The devil planned to give a loan with God bad name. 
a vehicle, a, a, somebody got knocked down in the front of the camp. And instead of him to die, it was only his glasses that got broken. And he stood up, can't wait, can't wait, can't wait. But the people that knocked him down, he doesn't even know if they have died now because he saw one person's skull split. They are the ones that knocked him down. They are the ones that sustained the entire city. That is an invisible hand. Are you listening to me? You had 11 years of barrenness. 11 years. How many of you had that testimony? Lay on the altar by the instruction. Roll on the altar. Let your belly be on the altar. That was the instruction. That was the end of 11 years barrenness. The God of miracles are worried. You had the testimonies of the other family members in this church. Eight years of barrenness. Eight years. They said they, are, they were tired. They, were, they have given up. But mercy showed up from heaven. They just said, the Lord family came and obeyed the instruction. Sir, Ma, we are on a flight. We survive by instruction. When they are giving you instruction, you have no right to say why. Just obey. No bus stop in the air. The pilot must just follow instruction. Are you listening to me? Am I making sense to somebody? He said in Psalm 32, verse 8, I will instruct you and I will teach you in the way that you shall go. And I will guide you with my eyes. And I will guide you with my eyes. In verse 9, he said, But don't be like the us and the moon who is without understanding, whose mouth have to be heard with beats. And what? With beats. So that they will not be able to just talk like parrots. Because of what? So that the enemy will not come near. So that they will not come near. Hallelujah. I pray for you this afternoon. That the anointing of the Holy Spirit that is coming upon you, instantly we shall see the evidence in your work, in your family, in your marriage. In the name of Jesus. If anybody claims, if any trouble, any problem claims that to be stubborn, none of them is as stubborn as God. He has been ancient of this, and nobody has ever inspired his deeds. Do you understand? The devil, the Lucifer, misbehaved, he flushed him out from heaven. Who is stubborn between devil, Satan and God? Let me tell you, you carry a God who will never take no for an answer concerning your case. He will never allow sickness, disease of any kind to continue to prevail over your life. Just give him your heart and believe his word. Anointing functions upon a person's life by principle. How does the anointing come? Hunger. A genuine hunger, genuine task for it. Genuine task for it. You have to hunger, you have to pant for it. You have to, your heart must be hungry for it. You see, when somebody is hungry, nothing else makes sense to him. When somebody is truly hungry, nothing else makes sense to him. You can't be seeking the anointing and still be engaged in so many things that Today you are in God's presence. Tomorrow you are considered. Tomorrow you are not considered. Today you are tired. Today you are not going. Where I stop, I will carry it up again. No, 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 no. No. Anyone who thirsts, let him come and buy. But without money. Isaiah 55, verse 1. But without money. But without money. What, then what is the price to buy? Hunger. Fast. Isaiah 55, verse 1. Shall we read together? Oh, everyone that thirsted, come ye to the waters. That water is in the anointing. Come you and the he that has no money, come ye buy, buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and make without money and without price. Wine and make it's not ever wine. No. It's not big meat. It's not three grams. Wine and make talks about anointing that comes upon a person. Genesis forty nine verse twelve. He said the the mouth of Jacob will be satisfied with me, and his eyes shall be red with wine. That talks about anointing. Genesis 49. His eyes shall be red with wine, and his teeth white with milk. That is anointing. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hunger in your spirit. Hunger in your spirit. It's not pastor alone that needs anointing. Because sometimes when we, church members are just quick to conclude, you just narrow it down. 
When they mention anointing, you think it's only for preaching. There is anointing for selling. There is anointing for selling. You'll be surprised some people open shop and nobody is patronizing them. And somebody will sell the same thing, will come and open the same, and sell the same thing, and they will be making money. There is an anointing. A woman trains six children up to university level, selling Akara, but is a member of one prayer group in one church. Akara, six children in university, and we have people working in all companies, still complaining. They can't even send one person to school. We have people in oil company can't even buy a plot of land. A woman selling Akara. Do you think it's Akara money that trade? There is a power packing this woman up. We call it grace advantage. There is something in the secret that is powering the destiny of this woman. You will miss it if you think it's Akara money. A woman used to be around Subway there. there. All she sells is it fruit or we do or tomatoes. And you'll be shocked. She cannot even sign a name. But she has built houses. She has built houses. You don't know what you are missing. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I told you last week, if the shadow of Peter can heal the sick, cast out devils, imagine what the shadow of God will do. Imagine what the shadow... Peter, Peter that even denied Christ. After he repented, the shadow is still healing. How much more God? What is the shadow? What talk? You are missing, no? If you, in case you don't know. Come. He said, come. That's Isaiah 55. You want the anointing? It starts with hunger. Say, hunger. I need the presence of God. Nobody can hold fire and be smiling. The reason why they strangulate your business and holding your neck is because you have no fire. Can you carry fire and somebody is holding you? No. No. You can't carry fire and somebody is holding your neck, holding you. Let them try it now. Uh -uh. He suffered no man to do them wrong. He suffered no man to do them wrong. Why? See, touch not my anointed. I do my prophet no harm. When the anointing truly comes upon you, God does not permit anything evil to pass through you. Walk in that consciousness. I know this every child of God that is born again, you have a measure of anointing upon you. A measure of anointing of God is upon you. But what? why you are not seeing it in manifestation is your prayerlessness. Where there is no prayer, anointing depletes. Where there is no consistent prayer. I'm not talking about congregational prayer. Congregational prayer just help you to remind you and to just, re, you know, refresh you. But the one that invests much into your life is that secret communion with God. Before prayer time, the Bible says a great while before dawn, before everybody stay home. Mark 1, 35, Jesus will withdraw to a solitary place and there he will invest into his destiny. Pray! He will do that for maybe one, two, three, four hours. Then he comes out. Why will he not walk on what? Why will he not do the impossible? Am I making sense to somebody? So, when you see that kind of sign around a woman, see, they close every other shop. They left your home. They say, I don't know. They just got there and they stopped. They didn't get God there, so angels stop them. Touch not my anointed. Touch not my anointed. There are many of you here. You have drunk the same water that killed other people, yet you didn't die. Something inside of you. Why don't you just farm it to flee? Wake up that you are not ordinary. God is lamenting over some of us here. We carry so much power. He said, Behold, was it is it Isaiah 46 now? Isaiah 40, that said, All kings are lying in glory. Is that Isaiah 42, 82? Is that about? All kings are in their houses lying in glory. All kings lying in glory. All kings lying in glory. They are there. God calls you king. He said, but you are lying down at all. You are not active. You are not on the field. Praise God. Anointing comes by the time God senses hunger in you. How bad do you need it? You see, when you need a person, the person can know. Because the way you be coming, the way you want to come around, where are you? The way you want to hang around the person, you, the person knows you actually wants to be, be with you. God can
cannot pretend. He can really sense it if he truly wants him. Number two source of the anointing, anointing comes through fasting. Food is good. But you must regulate it. If you want to work with God, God is a spirit. He doesn't eat the food we eat. So he permits you because you live on this planet earth, he permits you to just take a meal a while. But when you have a developed really fellowship with God, you will discover that he will dictate how you eat. Son, daughter, we need to get on a flight this week. You have to shut down your food till maybe 6 p.m. so that we can talk. Do you understand? He told, Ma- he told Moses, look, I need, there is a serious business here. Exodus 24, verse 12. He said, Moses, come to the mountain. Come and stay there. Come and be there. And little did Moses know, he thought it was going to be just a little flight. He was there 40 days. The presence of God came upon him, and God was familiar with him. Are you listening to me? That is the price for the anointing. It's a time of fasting. A time that you stop eating natural food. Sometimes you have to go with fruits alone, fruits and water. If truly you want to be to liberate your family members, anointing is the answer to the yoke, the stagnation. Anointing is the answer. You cannot carry anointing and be stranded. Get this revelation very clearly. You cannot be anointed and be stranded in life. Anointing is not spirit of the devil, spirit of any man. It's the spirit of God upon a man. Upon whosoever the spirit rested, upon whosoever the spirit rested, the Bible said that is him. Upon whosoever you see the spirit rested, that is him. He's a saint man. Listen to me. God has called you out of darkness and sent you to your family. There are many families crying, attached to your shoulder. If they fail, you are failed. Are you listening to me? And if you too fail, they will fail. Do you know that life is like a chain? Certain people must get information from you or get inspired by your life before they can move. Some of us, we are where we have today because somebody somehow, somewhere was used by God to inspire us and we jack up. Are you hearing me? Listen to me, there are steps you will never take in life except you probably see somebody who is really challenging you and stealing off something inside of you. May wrong people be separated from you. May wrong people be separated from you. You see, one of the causes you must escape in your life is to be surrounded by bad people. Because they won't inspire you to do what is right. They will never inspire you to do what is right. Anyone who doesn't love God will bring you down from God. If you are surrounded by people who have no heart for God, very soon you will miss God yourself. That is why you just don't spare anything that will not let you see God. Pray it out of your life. Are you listening to me? You pray it out of your life because fasting and praying, sometimes when you see people, the way they talk about food, you just wonder as if this is God. God said, look, don't, some people have, be, have made food to be the God of their belly. The God of their life. He said their belly is their God. I don't want to go into scripture because of time. I'm just trying to pick it. Some people have made their belly their God. You will not die if you don't eat. You will not die if you don't eat. Don't you see what destroy Esau? Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15 says, Look intelligently, lest anyone fail of the grace of God. Lest anyone fail of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness bring you up, trouble you. And many petify. Now, the next verse, verse 16. In our center on Esau. Let's read together. He said, Let there be, let there be any fornicator, a profane person, as Esau, who for one morsel of me sold his birthright. And I ask the question, why will God pick Esau of all people? What he did really annoyed God. <laughs> Can somebody be this blind? To your position as the firstborn, just because of what you want to eat. And that is a great lesson there. Too much of food has made a lot of people fools. Are you listening to me? Too much of food. Let me tell you somebody, you will not die if you don't eat once in a day. I don't know, is it forever? 
camp has ended. Perhaps you are afraid of that before some of us. But all about your own individual personal life. Please have a time that you withdraw from food. That I want to seek the face of God. Consciously, that is the channel by which I'm going to come. If anybody tells you fasting does not bring the anointing, they, not, they are not helping you. Are you listening to me? If anybody tells you fasting does not, the three men of God that I use as role models, in fact, there are four of them that I use as role models, having my still massive church. In fact, there are five. Amen? Pastor E. Adebo is a very good mentor for me. I watch him from afar and I watch, I follow. The grace of God upon this man is always on increase. But this is a man who, when you see him, you see fasting. The result in his life tells us what he's doing in his work. Compare with this, I mean, then looking at it in the scripture, from the scriptural angle. Is it not correct? The last time I heard about him, I was told that he fasts some 40 days without food three times a year. And trusting God for grace like that. Amen? Hallelujah. It was Bishop David Oedipo that fasted some time ago for 26 months until he was bleeding blood. For 26 months. Why? You see, when people don't know what you are buried, they will criticize your prosperity. Dr. Paul Inenche fasted one time for 500 days. 500 days. 500 days. Are you surprised at what you are saying? And now somebody will now come and criticize these people. You don't know what... 500 days. Do you understand? Somebody said, I hid myself. Is this Bishop Gion? He hid himself for nine years. Nine years. Do you want to hear the truth? You better begin to hide yourself. Even if your own is once in a week. I am telling you the truth. Anointing is not digestive biscuits. You pay. But God won't collect money from you. What do you use to pay? You pay with time spent in his presence, praying and fasting. When the anointing hits you, you don't need the one. You are not the one that will tell us that there is anointing upon you. The result will tell us. The result will tell us. Are you not tired of struggling and begging? Are you not? Are you not? Hallelujah. The little fast I do weekly or periodically, I see the results. I see it. In my life around me, I see it. The little I do. See, trusting God for more. Listen to me. When we ask you to wait upon God, even if you have challenge in your office, just two, three days is enough. Sort it out. Amen? Sort it out. Staying before God Maybe a whole day not going and settling your case. It can be one day fast for a particular issue. Staying one day, one day praying and talking. Maybe you and your wife. You have waited upon the Lord. It's already recorded in your account. It's deposited. You have made a, a tremendous impact over your destiny for that day. Everybody should learn it. Listen to me. Anointing comes from above. God anoints his people. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21. You see, for it is God who establishes us. And both anointed us. Only God. And his anointing comes directly. Thank God. If it was a pastor who anoints people. Do you understand? Probably it will be, it will be monopolized. Thank God. It's God. The anointing comes directly from God. Second Corinthians chapter 1 verse 21. Second Corinthians chapter 1 verse 21. Let me dear, can you please say for He said, now, he who establishes us with you in Christ and anointed us is who? So it comes from him. Every good gift and every perfect gift coming from above, from the Father of light, with whom is no variableness, no shadow of turning. James 1, 18 or thereabouts. Praise God. So anointing comes from him. Anointing comes from God. No man can receive anything. John three twenty seven. 
No man can receive anything except it be given to him from above. James 1, 17. I mean, sorry, John, John 3, 27. No man can receive anything. Dear son and daughter, you need anointing to perform excellently, even in that your office. There are many people that know better than you in that in concerning that project. But anointing will cause you to stand out. You know, sometimes you feel like breaking down because of too much of workload. But when the anointing answer on your head, they'll be wondering, how are you doing it? How are you doing it? It's anointing. You have the testimony of that, my daughter here. All through the time in camp, she said she didn't blink her eyes once for three days. You know, ordinarily you think that it's not possible. It's true. It's true. You understand? You can have the whole camp meeting that you don't even have time to blink. Because by the time others are going to, the, to rest, that is time you are going to prepare your message for the person. Do you understand? And you are still coming out again. And you now wonder, where is the grace coming from? Ordinarily, you can't do that. But grace will just rest on you. I pray for you today. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, what intimidates others will bow at your feet in Jesus' precious name. It takes an anointing. Anointing is what brings boldness upon a person. When the anointing comes upon you, you are bold. When the anointing comes upon you, you are bold. You are bold. Look at that lady's testimony I shared with you last week. I, that testimony really, really touched me. She said she was in a venting uh, as she was going from church. After three days of marathon fasting and prayer, she's a member of prayer band church. Prayer band in a church. And ah, it just an robber stopped their bus. And everybody pointed gun at them. And everybody saw me. He said, me. He said she didn't even know where the boldness came from. That is God for you. He said, God punish you. Put a hand on, on the face of the armed robber, which is God. God. God punish you on top of my three days fasting and prayer. Get out of my way. She has done it before she realized that it wasn't, she wasn't the one. That is how the Holy Ghost comes. Are you hearing? She said, she just pointed at God. She said, speaking in tongues. On top of my three days fasting and prayer. Another lady share her own testimony. They say, everybody, open your back. He said, I think this one was an evil girl. Evil girl. No. She replied, the armed robber, pin, you won't get it. Everybody said, pin. And the armed robber just turned to us. The pin, you won't get Just carry a bag as I leave it. And the robber that said, me, pin, you won't get it. Hey, may God tear up this fire inside of you. May God tear up this fire inside of you. May God tear up this fire inside of you. Hope every time you you saw uh, you saw Lisa, you pick call, you call pastor, you call this. You, hey, hey, let me sleep. Let me rest. Are you hearing me? We need anointing to finish all this. You wake up, you just turn around for making noise around my life. For even coming around my door, use that foul spirit. In the thunder, fire you and your entire household. Is somebody hearing me? Look, it's important call I want to hear. Are you listening to me? You saw the lady they brought to camp while I was ministering, while ministration was off. I've seen the missed call. I don't know why they were calling me. Because I prayed for that girl two days ago while she was on drip. Do you understand? But a day, I mean, a week before camp, they now have to bring her to camp. She just said they should be taking her to camp. Why? She was bleeding profusely. Bleeding. 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 Huh? So I called two of my sons to join me. We drove. Service was still on. For, for the mother to follow her to camp. She has not even been in church for almost three, four months. Are you listening to me? I think Pastor Shedding knows the fact. Pray with me. Encourage me. Strengthen me. See, Pastor Forrest too was around. You are around. You are around. Too. Okay. Pray with him. Ask her to. She said she can't stand up. I said, stand up. She stood up. Only I need her. She led her. Pray with her. She 
Jesus preached his sermon. That was all. So go and rest and eat food. I'm telling you, the devil wants to snatch her. But thank God for her. Camp was not too far from her, from the hospital. I said, Who is this man that brought you? He says, Taxi fire. Brought you to camp. Ah. I said, God, this woman has come to challenge you. Ah, no, this woman has come to challenge you. This girl must not die. Because I know that blood is life. When blood is getting out of your body, you are dying. Stop in the name of Jesus. And that flow ceases. I pray for somebody under the sound of this voice. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Whatever Satan is taking out of your life without God's permission. Right now, I command a speed. Let there be restoration. Let there be restoration. Let there be restoration. Let there be restoration. In the name of Jesus. The devil that has vowed that you won't get married. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you will get married and give birth on top. In the name of Jesus. I'm telling you, all those who have vowed that you will get married, it's a lie. Oh. You will get married, you will carry your babies. Has anybody told you, let me see how you are going to carry babies? You will tell them, I've seen some in the camp who carry their babies. So you're a liar. That you should be your testimony. He said, For in thy life shall we see light. For with this, the fountain of light, in thy life shall we see light. Psalm 36, verse 9. So the testimony of one should inspire you to live on your own. The testimony of one, you have seen how God disgraced 11 years of barrenness, 7 years of barrenness, 2 years of barrenness, and we also saw 4 years of barrenness. God broke those you slapped the devil out of their life. I prophesy to you right now, whatever is yours that is put there, but the power that is in the name of Jesus is released. Your husband is released. Your wife is released. Your husband is released. Your wife is released. Your husband is released. Your baby is released. Your kid is released. Your next love is released. Your promotion is released. So whatever bondage your children are trapped in, without you knowing whatever may be the cause, why this your son, why this your daughter is still down standard, don't in the name of Jesus, whatever is that cause that yoke over your children is broken now in the name of Jesus. Whatever has forbid your family from rising, whatever forbid your business from flourishing, whatever forbid your wife from conception, whatever forbid your, your, your business from, from producing, resolve, whatever is making life difficult for you as we speak, but the power that is in the name of Jesus, you are set at liberty, not in the name of Jesus. Anointing comes by fasting and by prayer. You have to give yourself consistently to prayer. You have to give yourself consistently to what? To prayer. And after they have prayed and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Acts 13, verse 2 to 3. Acts 13, verse 2 to 3. After they have prayed, as they minister to the Lord, and they have prayed and fasted, yes, the Holy Ghost said, Son of God, devotional prayer is not what I'm talking about here. Family devotion is not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about you spending personal time with God, even if it is 30 minutes consistently. Let your hand be evidence upon my life. Bring me out of this place. Give me proof that I belong to you. Like the These are things that God wants to hear. That you are truly listening. You want a change? You think all those testimonies of people, other people, other men of God, you are hearing? It came just like rain falling. They laid them. Paul said, People envy him, they talk about him. He said, But I labor more than them all. I speak in more than them all. Have you not read that? He said, In fasting, often, many times in prison, and I'm also out of it. Strife, naked. He, he said, But none of these things move me. But none of these things move me. Please understand. It's high time that your life will begin to have meaning. 
One thing the anointing does upon a person, which I want you to please take note. Anointing is the drawer of blessing. It draws. It draws. Are you looking for helpers? Are you looking for husband? Are you looking for customers? Are you looking for support? When the, the, the moment the anointing increase upon you, it will draw them. Jesus Christ said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, what will I do? I will draw. It has to be there to draw. When the anointing came upon the apostles, the Bible says in one day, at two, chapter 2, verse 41 and 42, 3,000 were had it. The moment the Holy Ghost arrived in verse 1 to 4, in verse, 40, in, start, in verse 41 and 42, 3,000 were had it. I pray this day, let there be divine addition to you. No, 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 The arrival of the anointing is the commencement of your multiplication. The arrival of the anointing is an initiation into abundance. So anointing comes, man, by hunger, by fasting, by prayer. Anointing comes by meditation in the word of God. Give yourself to the word of God. Let the word of God enter into you. Meditate. Psalm 39, verse number 3. Psalm 39, verse number 3. As I was meditating, as I was musing, fire began to burn. Fire began to burn. What is that fire? He said, it's my work, not like fire, like I'm at the break, get rock into pieces. That fire is the anointing. As I was meditating, it's one thing to carry Bible. That Bible will remain ordinary letter until you switch into meditation. It is your meditation that transforms, that squeezes the fire in it to manifestation. As I, I said, my heart was hot within me. While I was musing, the fire burned. Then I began to speak. Then I began to speak. When I was meditating, I was thinking, I was munching it, I was eating it. You give your time to study. Bam! Fire increase. That is anointing. That is anointing. Rise up. Jesus, you love me too much, oh, too much, too much, oh, blessed love. I say, Jesus, you love me too much, oh, too much, oh, blessed love. Your love is kind. Come on, everybody, let's sing. Your love is patience. Your love is patience. You feel my heart. You feel my heart. With so much peace and joy. With so much peace and joy. Can somebody say he's amazing God? You're amazing. All right. You make my life prepare you. You make my life feel brand new. You're an amazing God. Come on, let's sing. You're amazing. You're amazing. And that is why we can clap it from our side. You make my life feel brand new. Oh, oh, oh. Jesus, you love me too much. Oh. Father, 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 if only you had the help, if only you had 
quickly. If I need to go for it, it will come. It will come. You can't get it. 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 You Hallelujah. I want to give you one opportunity. Close your eyes and ask God. I am weak. I need your strength. Listen to me. On the altar you may see me standing strong. If I get to my room, my closet to pray. I lay flat on my floor. I will tell him how weak I am. I'm serious. On the altar you may see me speaking fire. Because I know I need to encourage you. If I tell you there are not things, there are things that, that, that I have not seen things that discourages one in minutes. I've seen a lot. But I have known the secret of retiring to his presence, a place of strength. I want you to ask him, you are in a place of strength. He said, let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The weight on some of you is too much that you can carry. You need him. Some of you, you are even tired. Move to the road. You need an anointing that will help you. Tell him, Lord, I'm weak. I need your strength. Lord, I'm in a bunch of giving up. I need you. Please help me. If you don't help me, I'm finished. If you don't step into the matter right now, I'm gone. Cry out before I pray the final prayer. Mercy, only mercy can take you from behind and put your head. Mercy is what I cry for. Your mercy. Mercy will be a your error. Mercy will be a your weakness. Mercy will be a your mistake. Mercy will give you what you don't deserve. Show me mercy. Mercy. Mercy gives children. Mercy gives promotion. Mercy gives job. In Jesus' precious name, can you stretch forth your hands? Dear Lord, I thank you for sending your word. How the anointing comes. This is how far you can help us. I know that there are so many other points I will have shared that will buttress this. Like faith in the anointed servant of God that has been sent as a gift. I pray for these ones in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. As they connect with the oil of gladness, as they connect with the grace of God in the house, as their heart is open, as they decide to take their life further in search for you. Open the heaven, open this way. Keep them in this station. In the name of Jesus. Lord, stop every molestation in the house. Stop every 
the harassment of the wicked in their life. Let them know that you are real. Let it go beyond knowledge. Give them experience of a lifetime that you truly love them. So shall you be. Before the anointing session, let us take the announcement and give our offerings so that after the anointing session, everybody will be going home. Praise God. I'm sure somebody is blessed this morning. Can you put your hands together for Jesus? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is time for us to pay our tithes and to give our offering. The Bible says, God loveth a cheerful giver. Glory be to God. The Bible says, We should bring a tithe into the house of the Lord that there may be meat in the house. He said, We should try meat with this. He's not going to open the doors of heaven. So, what we are doing now is a commandment from God. Praise the Lord. It is more blessed to give than to receive. The Bible said, God, give a seed to the sower and a bread to the, to the eater. And as you, as you obey this instruction today, I see your heaven open the precious name of Jesus Christ. If you are with your tithe in the house, I would like to walk to the altar as the, as the custom is. And everyone with their offering should leave their offering before God. If you are with your tithe in the house, just walk to the altar right now. And everyone with their seed should lift up their seed before God. And begin to speak to the seed in your hands. That this is my seed, O oh God. Let my harvest come speedily. Begin to talk to God. Begin to talk to Him. The Lord of heaven, Lord, I said, drop this seed. Let my harvest come. Lord, you are the one that gives seed to the sower. This is what you have given unto me. And out of what you have blessed me with, I brought it before your throne. And to as many that bring their time before God today, I ask, begin to ask God that God of heaven, in obedience to your word, let my heaven be open. King of glory, Lord of Lord, I ask this day, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every seed that will come out of this one's law, they will return with their harvest, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We bless your wonderful Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. God love his cheerful giver. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a powerful God. What a marvelous God. He has done marvelous things for me. What a powerful God, what a marvelous, he's yet to do marvelous things again, hallelujah. What a powerful God, what a marvelous God, he has done marvelous things for me. What a powerful, what a powerful God, what a marvelous, he says to do marvelous things what a powerful God, what a marvelous God, He has done marvelous things for me. What a powerful God, what a marvelous, He said to do marvelous things again. What a powerful God, what a marvelous God, what a marvelous God. 